So guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we are going to be discussing computer programming languages and program development. So let us understand that in time past, programs were written in machine codes, that is, in zeros and ones. These machine codes seem so complicated and hard, as well as time-consuming to write with. However, now we can make use of other programming languages, which are much easier to learn and much easier to code with than machine code. However, programs written in these new programming languages may need to be translated into machine codes before being used by the computer. I believe we can still remember the translators from our previous class. So the translators can help translate these programs into the machine codes before the system can make use of them. So let's quickly look at the categories of programming language. We have the machine language, the low level language, and the high level language. So the machine language uses the binary or the electrical signal sequence on or off, that is one or zero, also known as machine code. The machine language actually has a lot of disadvantage because of the fact that it is time consuming and it requires to have a deep understanding of the electronic details of the computer. Hence, a good advantage of the machine language is that you don't need the work of a translator in the programming because it is already in the machine code which the computer understands and can execute directly. The low-level language, on the other hand, is a machine-oriented language which makes use of mnemonics in place of the binary coded operation codes. For instance, to add two numbers, 5 and 6, if I was using a machine language, I would perhaps write a number of codes like 1001100 a lot of stuff like that i'll have to think of a combination of zeros and ones that would actually relate this addition of these two numbers but in a low level language i don't need to do this i might just use a mnemonic just like add five six and then i'm done so another thing to consider while using a low level language is the architecture of the machine because the program must conform to the instruction set of the machine for it to run efficiently with the machine so it can also be machine dependent based on the architecture of the particular machine. So lastly, the high level language generally makes use of natural language elements which are easy to use. So um, basically they provide a strong abstraction from the details of the computer and this is done by presenting a level of complexity which is easy for the user to interact with the system while suppressing the more complex details below the current level. Also, the high-level language was initially categorized into two main types, that is the scientific and the business. But then, we can see today that there are high-level languages that are actually developed 
to handle both categories. So instead, we can actually categorize them as special peoples and multi-peoples languages. So for the special peoples languages, we can now have the scientific and the business, whereas the multiple peoples are now the ones that satisfy the both. So examples of the special peoples programming languages, we have the MATLAB, the Coral Six, and the rest of them. Whereas the multi-purpose high-level languages, we have the Java, we have the C Sharp, we have the C++, and the rest of them. All right, so next we'll look at the core programming principles. Core programming principles. So the core programming principles or attributes and guidelines that are required for the development of a good computer program include one, reliability, the next, maintainability, next, portability, next, readability, next, performance, next, efficiency, next, memory saving and next reusability so before in the class i would like us to consider the definition of some terms here so the first is batch processing so batch processing is a grouping together of several input files to be executed one after another by a computer without any user interaction it is achieved by placing a list of the commands to start the required jobs into a batch file that can be executed as if it were a single program. The next is interactive processing. Interactive processing is a computer processing in which the user can modify the operation appropriately while observing results at critical steps. Next is syntax. Syntax is a set of rules that covers how statements of a computer language are formulated. The next is semantics. Semantics is the meaning of the constructs of a computer language in contrast to their syntax. Or form. The next is algorithm. An algorithm is a sequence of operations for solving a specific type of problem, which often begins with an input value and yields an output value in a finite number of steps. And the next is pseudocode. A pseudocode is a description of computer programming algorithm that does not use detailed language-specific syntax. So a pseudocode does not use a language-specific syntax. That's the only difference. And if you find it difficult understanding any of the terms we just explained now, no need to panic. Just relax and follow the classes. With time, you'll get to understand all. So thanks for watching. Please like our videos subscribe if you've not subscribed yet also share our videos for more likes and subscriptions thanks